Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on alternating current from October November 2021, paper 4, variant 1. In this lesson, we will discuss what is meant by the RMS value of an alternating voltage. We will also discuss the effect of rotation on EMF value. Then we will also sketch a graph between EMF and time. For part A, we need to state by reference to power dissipated in a resistor what is meant by the RMS value of an alternating voltage. As question is asking us to give reference of power dissipated in a resistor, so we have to mention about power dissipated in our answer. Let's try to understand what is RMS value of AC with the help of one very simple example. Imagine that we have a light bulb and this is our filament light bulb or you can say this is filament lamp. Let's say the normal operating voltage of this one is 220 volts and the power of this light bulb is 100 watts. It simply means that if we connect this light bulb with DC power supply of 220 volts. So the power dissipated will be equal to 100 watts. Now imagine that if we connect the same light bulb across AC power supply. So here is AC power supply. This is the symbol for AC power supply. Now we need to find out how much voltage, AC voltage we have to use here. So the power dissipated by this light bulb is also equal to 100 watt. Before we answer that one, let's try to understand the difference between AC and DC. If you look at AC voltage, this one is AC voltage and this one is DC. AC voltage, it changes with time and it follows sinusoidal curve. So this is not constant, but DC is constant. So we have to find out the equivalent value of AC that is equal to DC. And that value is the RMS value. So the equivalent value of DC is equal to RMS of AC. RMS value is known as effective voltage of alternating voltage. And RMS is equal to DC. So if we give AC power supply with RMS value of 220 volts, so I will write down 220 volts. If RMS value of AC power supply is equal to 220 volts, this light bulb will also dissipate 100 volts. So that's all what we need to understand. It means the RMS value of AC is equal to DC. So RMS value of AC is equal to DC. So that's all what we need to understand. Now let me explain you how you can write down a proper answer. So this is how you can write down your answer. If you have written this much, you will get two marks. And the first mark is M mark if you have mentioned about equivalent value of DC. So let me write down about this. If you have mentioned about this part, equivalent value of steady current, you will get one mark. And this is the M mark, means it has to be in your answer. If you have mentioned about the second part, you will get the second mark, that is A mark. For part B, it is given to us a coil is rotating freely on frictionless bearings at constant speed in a uniform magnetic field. This rotation causes an induced alternating EMF across the open terminals of the coil. So this coil is not a complete loop. So only EMF is induced but there is no current. It is also given to us the induced EMF has RMS value of 12 volts and frequency of rotation is 50 hertz. The speed of rotation of the coil is now double. We have to state and explain with reference to principle of electromagnetic induction the effect of increased speed of rotation. It means the speed of rotation of this coil is double now. We have to state effect of that on the RMS value of induced EMF. Let's try to find the relationship between induced EMF and rotation of the coil. EMF is equal to rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So this is how you can write down rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. That magnetic flux linkage is equal to NAB cosine of theta is equal to NAB cosine of theta. In this case, theta is equal to omega t. So I will write down here theta is equal to omega t. 
why I'm using omega here because we need to find the relationship between rotation means the angular speed of the coil and EMF so that's the reason I replace angular displacement with angular velocity from here uh, we can take n out because n number of turns of the coil are constant area of the coil is constant and magnetic field is uniform then we simply left with d by dt of cosine omega t and d by dt of cosine omega t this is equal to negative omega sine of omega t so simply we need to differentiate cosine omega t with respect to times so finally we can write down this is n a b omega sine of omega t so this is emf how it is changing with time but for maximum value of emf we can write down here emf is maximum when sine omega t is maximum and sine omega t is maximum when sine omega t is equal to one so we can say this is equal to n a b omega so maximum value of emf is equal to n a b omega if the angular velocity or you can simply say angular speed is double so emf is double it means when root rotation is double emf is also double so that's the point we need to understand let's try to understand how we can write down the answer for this question now this question has two marks so we have to write down two points to get two marks the first point you can write down is maximum rate of cutting of magnetic flux double so if the omega is double it means the emf is double so it means maximum rate of cutting of magnetic flux double so if omega double maximum value of emf is also double so we can say the peak value of emf is double so if the peak value of emf is double so we can find out the rms value of emf so that will be equal to the peak value of emf divided by root 2 so if peak value is double it means rms value is also double so this is the second point you can say as the peak value is double hence rms value of induced emf is also double so if you write on these two points you will get two marks and these two marks are b mark they have to be in your answer for second part on figure 9.1 we need to sketch the variation with time t of the induced emf across the terminals of the coil at increased speed of rotation and we need to sketch from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 20 milliseconds we can also assume that e is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0. For this question, it is given to us that initial value of the frequency, this is equal to 50 hertz. But speed was double. The angular speed was double. Omega is equal to 2 pi f. We can also say this is angular frequency. Angular frequency was double. So it means frequency also double. So the new value of the frequency, we can say this is equal to 100 hertz. So we can find out time period means new value of time period that will be equal to 1 over f nu and that will be equal to 10 millisecond means f nu is equal to 100 so this is the new time period it is also given to us that initial value of rms so i can i can say rms initial so initial value of rms is given in this question that is equal to 12 volt but after angular speed is double rms value of emf was also double so we can say rms value the final rms value this is double so this is 24 volts now from here we can find out peak value of emf so we can say e peak this will be equal to root of 2 times rms value of emf rms value so this is root of 2 multiply with 24 this is rms value of emf this is peak value of emf and this is the time period of rotation now we have to use these two information and we can sketch the graph so this is one time period and this is equal to two 
time period. Now simply we need to sketch using the peak value of EMF and time period. This is how we can sketch. In this case the peak value this is 34 volts and this is the time period. So this is equal to 2. That's all if you sketch like this you will get 3 marks for this question. So this has 3 marks. For part C, we need to state and explain the effect on the motion of the coil in B of connecting a load resistor across its terminals. It simply means that if we connect a load resistor across terminals of this coil, we are simply completing this loop. Now this is a complete loop. This is a circuit. So in this case, current will flow. So in this case, current will flow through this resistor. So the mechanical energy of the coil will be converted into electrical and electrical finally will be converted into thermal energy. When all the mechanical energy has been used up or has been converted into mechanical energy and then into thermal, this coil will finally stop. Because in this question it was given to us the coil is rotating freely. So coil is rotating freely at constant speed. At constant speed. Or we can also say it has certain amount of kinetic energy. So we can say it has fixed amount of kinetic energy. So when all that energy has been converted into other forms of energy, so this coil will finally stop other forms of energy so the coil will finally stop this is one way to understand based on energy but we can also understand based on forces imagine that we have this is conductor and we also place another piece of conductor here and this conductor this is placed inside a constant magnetic field so this is placed inside constant magnetic field if we move this conductor this is a slider actually you need to understand this is a slider if we move this slider this way in this case in this loop magnetic field will increase so current will flow in this loop in a way so it will try to reduce the change in magnetic flux. So current will flow in such a way that it will produce its own magnetic field that will be out of the page. So if magnetic field induced due to current is out of the page, then you can use right and rule. You can find out direction of current. So in this case, current will flow counterclockwise. So this is direction of current, induced current. So current here, it will go up. Now you can use left and rule. You can find out if direction of external magnetic field is into the page. So this is direction of external magnetic field B is into the page and if current flow up this is direction of current so the force on this slider this will be this way and that force is the opposing force that will oppose the motion so we can also explain this one based on force so due to opposing force this coil will finally stop so this is another way to explain now look at this now so this is how you can write down your answer in your answer if you have mentioned these points so so based on energy you can simply say that current in the resistor dissipates energy of rotation so coil stops rotating or you can explain current in the coil results in forces that opposes its motion so coil stops rotating so you can explain this one based on forces or you can explain this one based on conservation of energy 